The family and I recently had a little getaway to tropical far north Queensland. While we were there, we explored a few of the local aquatic ecosystems. We had a great time, but when I got back home to Victoria in winter, I was pretty bummed. The ponds didn't look as nice as they did a few months ago. And while we were away, there'd been plenty of leaf fall, so I decided to do a bit of pond maintenance to get things looking as good as they can. Well, for winter anyway. So I busted out my cheap pond net and the GoPro, and I was going to explain how I maintain and approach each different pond, but I thought that's going to be incredibly boring and repetitive. I thought it would be more helpful to talk about maintaining healthy aquatic environments and how we can design them to be more maintenance friendly and how we then go about taking care of them. Throughout the video I'll be showing lots of my different ponds with the hope being that no matter what size pond you have or what you keep, you can find something useful in this video. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and visit my website ozponds.com. So I like my ponds to be as complete an ecosystem as I can get them. That means I'll have rock, pebble, plants. There'll also be some build-ups of sediment and even some algae. Some people prefer very clean ponds and that's fine, but that's not what I'm after. I want my ponds to look somewhat natural. I want them to be super easy to maintain because I'm lazy, but I want them to look good so that I can enjoy them. So to do that, I try and replicate things found in the aquatic environments I'm drawn to in nature. Moving water, lots of plants, rocks and pebbles. I find I'm most drawn to river or stream environments. So when I design most of my ponds, it's with this in mind. I'll generally have a filter, then a stream, and then a pump that returns the water back to the filter. This constant circulation is like a section of a river. The filter, in my case almost always a bog filter, is kind of like a natural spring that forms the headwaters of a stream. A bog filter has lots of bacteria, organisms and plants that purify the water. From the bog filter the water moves down into a stream, Maybe there's some cascades or a waterfall. This water movement helps add oxygen into the water. From the stream, the water falls into the pond. This is like a wider section of the river or a natural choke point where the water would be deeper and naturally pool. In a river or a stream system, the water would continue down, but in my backyard, it gets pumped back to the top by a pump to begin its journey all over again. I also have some smaller ponds and some without circulation at all. These ponds more mimic a backwater situation with lots of plants and a thick layer of sediment. I always say there's lots of different ways to filter water and the ways that I filter my ponds are by no means the only viable option. The methods I talk about on the channel and my website are just the methods that resonate with me. I find them easy to understand and implement. You can find playlists on how all my ponds were built, as well as sizing guides. If you want everything in one handy place, there is a downloadable PDF available on my website, ozponds.com. But anyway, that's a brief overview on how I've designed and built my ponds. So now we can take a look at the maintenance. In a river system, everything is pushed downstream. Eventually sediments and nutrients are pushed out to sea or settle out in larger bodies of water, like a lake. In our ponds, anything that falls into or breaks down inside the system kind of stays there. It's not going to get flushed out to sea. Fish waste, uneaten food, dead plants get processed within the pond by bacteria and organisms. Some material is left behind and can be released into the water as nutrients or build up as layers of sediment. From time to time, rivers flood and can dislodge sediments from one area and deposit them in another. In our backyard ponds, rain events can help to dilute the buildup of nutrients inside the water. In areas with low rainfall, water changes may be necessary. To further help reduce sediment and nutrient, we can remove some of it manually. And that's what I started doing in my ponds as soon as I got back from holiday. 
Some people like to fully drain and pressure wash their ecosystem ponds, but that's not something I like to do. When you do such things, you remove so much of the beneficial organisms that form the base of the food chain. So what I like to do is start at the top of the system and work my way down, removing and dislodging algae and plant material caught in the stream and the bog filters. I work my way down with the flow. As I'm going, lots of smaller muck and debris is making its way into the main body of water. Here it settles out and sinks to the bottom, but while I'm cleaning, I don't want it to. I want it to be pulled over to the pumps, so I stir the pond up and keep removing stuff. Larger materials will be stopped before they reach the pumps. Depending on the size of the pond, this will vary. Smaller materials will pass through the pumps and be sent to the bog filter where they will hopefully settle out for later removal. Sometimes that's as simple as opening a valve on the filter. Sometimes it involves a separate pump. Again, it depends on the size of the pond and some of the different design elements that I've used. But the basic gist is I'm removing as much of the larger materials as I can and letting the filters capture the smaller stuff for removal at a later date. I find this method of maintenance works for me, keeps the ecosystem intact, and is much less work than a full drain and clean. The more often you conduct this type of maintenance, the cleaner your pond will be. I'm pretty lazy and I have lots of ponds, so I don't do it as often as, as I should, but I couldn't handle looking at all that debris in the ponds after our holiday. And of course, smaller ponds are easier to net than larger ponds. On my dream pond, I can't net the deep sections, so over the winter the sediments will build up. The aerator helps keep some stuff suspended, and it makes its way to the intake bay, but not all of it. So these sediments will sit there until the weather warms up again, and I can get in there and stir it up to keep everything circulating. In an ecosystem, there's going to be times when things look fantastic, and times when they don't. It's the same in nature. Before our holiday, there'd been lots of rain in North Queensland, and there was lots of suspended sediment in the water. There was plenty of sediment around and covering the rocks, but the ecosystems we explored were all incredibly beautiful and unique. So an ecosystem pond is the same. It doesn't need to be perfect to be beautiful. For me, it just needs to be healthy and easy to maintain, and that's what I aim to create and hopefully inspire others to create. Now I know I glossed over a lot of the details, so if you'd like to learn more about how to build these sorts of ponds without spending a fortune, I encourage you to explore my other videos and my website. I do hope the resources that I create are helpful. Thanks for watching. See ya.